thank you all. Thank you all for coming this evening. I really appreciate that again. And again, I do want to recognize a few people. Our department chair, Dr. Brian Barrett. There are several faculty here from our department as well. Dr. Fran Pomaville, Nan Barker, Dr. Paul Ogden, Patty Parker, and Trisha Houston. I also see Kathy Yoshida out there. Did I get everyone? Sorry, I can't see everybody. And oh, hi, Dr. Christine Mall. Thank you so much for coming and being here. Oh, and also way over there, hi. One more, sorry, I forgot to mention. Cynthia Cavazos. Is that the right spelling? Good. Yay, thank you. Also, the pastor from the Fresno Deaf Church is here, and that is Keith Catron. The director of the Hard of Hearing Service Center, Michelle Bronson. It's nice to see so many different people who are involved in the deaf community be here with us tonight. So thank you all for coming. I want to thank Hannah as well. Where did Hannah go? I do want to thank Hannah, there she is. She was inspired and did not want to keep that to herself. She wanted to share that inspiration and she did that through the nomination to be able to have you experience a little bit of what she experienced. Thank you, Brianne, as well for the many, many meetings and all of the work that went into the preparation for this evening. When Brianne and I met, she told me that this whole concept of Fresno State Talks came from the ideas of just a few students, a few students who wanted to recognize the professors who inspired them and spread that inspiration. And that's a beautiful concept. So I applaud the students on the committee for your dream and your vision and for making this happen. When Brianne shared that with me, immediately my mind jumped back to 1988. Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. It's the only liberal arts university in the world designed for deaf people. And that same idea, a few students with a dream set out to change the world. For the 124 years of Gallaudet's history, it had been run by hearing presidents. It's a deaf university with deaf students, deaf instructors who use sign language to teach the students, deaf organizations, deaf sports, but run by a hearing president for 124 years since its inception in 1864. In 1988, the students decided it was time for a change. They began the movement that became a world changer. They locked down the campus. They closed the gates. No one could get in, no one could get out. They were ready to tell the world, look at us. We're deaf and we can do anything. We're here to send the message loud and clear. The world looks at us and we're showing the world that after being told we can't for so many years, it's time to show that we can. And that moment in 1988, that week of March 6th to March 13th, 1988, changed the fate of deaf people. We will never again go back to the time of being run by a hearing president. We have deaf presidents now at Gallaudet University. Two years prior to 1988, a significant event took place. A movie was released entitled Children of a Lesser God.
Marley Matlin won Best Actress Oscar for her role in 1986. People watched that movie and it was the first time that a deaf character portrayed by a deaf actress was seen on the big screen. That led to people being interested in American Sign Language. After the movie was released and Marley Matlin won her award, people began to take more notice of sign language and its beauty. ASL classes around the United States exploded with students signing up and teachers asking why the sudden interest in American Sign Language? All because of children of a lesser God. The media plays a significant role in people's perceptions and in people's interest. So in 1986, people were already talking about American Sign Language, already interested in, had already been exposed to it. And then two years later, 1988, the movement at Gallaudet University the stage had been set. People were primed and ready. That seed had been planted. It should have been a university problem, a university issue within the confines of Washington, D.C. But because of the media attention on that movie, and the movie had been translated into 22 languages, it became a worldwide event. The world moved in support of the students and said, you're right, it is time for a change. The things that have been happening for the past 124 years cannot continue to happen. Deaf people began to show the world what we can do, not what we can't do. The deaf community sees things from a different perspective. It's interesting that hearing people often see us as disabled, but we as deaf people see ourselves as a cultural and linguistic minority opposite points of view, talking about the same group of people. Again, American Sign Language opened that door, gave people that interest, and led to much more. American Sign Language, ASL, is what I call the gateway into the deaf world. Again, people see ASL, they see someone signing at a restaurant or they see someone at a coffee shop, they go into a store and see someone signing and they're fascinated by it. They want to know what that is. Typically they don't realize that with that language comes a culture. Culture and language, culture and language are enmeshed together. When you learn the language, it leads to le learning the culture. You must learn the culture behind the language. And people are inspired by that. It's a beautiful, rich language, culture with history, values, traditions. Throughout history, people did not see it that way. People commonly looked at deaf people as disabled. They looked at the things they couldn't do. They believed that we couldn't work. They believe that we can't drive. They believe that we can't cook. They believe that we can't have families. We can't have children. They think that we can't own our own homes. There's all these things that history has said, that people have said that we cannot do that feeds into this perception. But I have some news for you. It's not true. So let me share a little bit about myself. That's me driving. I can drive. <laughs> it's a Honda. I love it. <laughs> I cook. I cook. I make tortillas, homemade tortillas. It's a little tricky, but I do. I own my own home. I have my own small business. I'm a Mary Kay representative. I'm not trying to sell Mary Kay, but I do have my own little business. <laughs> I can work, that's my point. I have a family. I have my beautiful daughter here with me tonight. <laughs> and of course, she wants to say hi. 
and I ride a bicycle. Imagine that. It's a little silly, but it's true. It's, this is, you know, my point is to show you that we can do anything. We have no limitations. A lot of people think that we can't do things. And that message has been spread out through history. And people believe that. And we want to dispel that message and get rid of that myth and misconception that people have. Here in America, we have 42 million deaf or hard of hearing people. 42 million. That's a lot. So the chance of you running into a deaf person is pretty good. That's why it's so important for you all to become allies. I need you, we need you to become allies to the deaf community. I am blessed to live in the year 2014 because society was not always so accepting of deaf people. How I know this is if you look at the media, if you look at movies, films, television shows, there's more deaf actors and actresses, more deaf producers, deaf directors who are involved in the media. There are more TV shows that have deaf characters, which is wonderful. More television shows portray ASL. Of course, a popular TV show that we have right now is Switched at Birth. It's on ABC Family Channel, and it's a wonderful show. It's a great depiction of deaf people and how the media can influence society. Because if it's acceptable in the media on television, then typically society agrees with them. And history has shown that over and over and over again. Unfortunately, society hasn't always been accepting of deaf people. Again, remember I had said previously that you can have one thing that two people see completely differently. For example, Alexander Graham Bell. Americans, of course, in American history, we look up to Alexander Graham Bell. He's respected, respected, honored, revered, because he invented the telephone. Right? Back in the day, that's what the telephone looked like. In history books, it's printed, Alexander Graham Bell, a great man, admired by many people. Americans depend on him. He invented the telephone. He was talented, genius, it had all these inventions. But ironically, the deaf community does not look up to Alexander Graham Bell. He is not respected in our community. He is not honored. Alexander Graham Bell worked very diligently to try and destroy deaf people. Many don't realize that he actually had a deaf mother. His wife was also deaf and they both did not sign. They used speech and lip reading. As his mother got older, she used the manual alphabet, the ABCs, when she could not understand how to lip read. Signing was forbidden in that home. Alexander Graham Bell believed that speech was superior to sign language. He worked very hard using his money, his power, his influence traveled the world, lecturing, convincing people that speech was far better than sign language. But even more than that, Alexander Graham Bell wanted to convince people, tried to convince people, that deaf people should not marry. He said it was not a good idea because if a deaf person met and married another deaf person, they would create more deaf people, and he did not want that. To him, being deaf was a tragedy, and he worked very hard 
at trying to make sure that the deaf community was destroyed. But there was resistance from the deaf community. And he tried over and over again to pass several laws and failed. However, a lot of damage was already done. This led to people believing that deaf people can't do this, should not do this, should not exist. And that led to the oppression of deaf people, which is very hard for us to overcome. To this day, we are still fighting that oppression. Again, America looks at Alexander Graham Bell as a wonderful man, and the deaf community looks at him as not. But I am very grateful that someone invented the telephone because of communication, right? You guys cannot live without your phones. I know you all have your cell phones. You're texting all the time. So the fact that the phone was invented, I am very grateful for. In 1964, TTYs were invented, which is the teletypewriter, a device that deaf people use to talk on the phone. You would have to put a regular telephone on a device where you would type, and you could talk to another deaf person who had that device, or go through an operator and talk to someone who was hearing uh, through that device. And then in 2000, video phones were invented which was a wonderful invention. I could use my natural language, American Sign Language, and make calls that way. The challenge with the video relay service is that the interpreter that appears on the screen, so I can see an interpreter and the interpreter can see me, when the interpreter pops up on the screen, they, they see me and I can communicate with them, just like this picture here. So they're using sign language, I'm using sign language, and they call the hearing person, so whether it's the doctor or my boyfriend or uh, ordering pizza, whatever that is, they make that telephone call. I make that telephone call through them. And so it's a three-way conversation, kind of like we're doing tonight, but the interpreter's on a screen. Now, the interpreter that I get on screen could be male, could be female, they could have a low-pitched voice, a high-pitched voice, they could have an accent, they could talk very fast. I never know who I'm going to get when I call video relay service. So I don't know who my voice would be. So one well-known way to communicate that people do every day is gesturing. So imagine this for a moment. I'm driving and I get to a red light, and I see another car pull up next to me, kind of waving at me, and I reluctantly look over, and there's a sign, and there's a gentleman holding up a sign with his number, and he gestures, call me, and he's pretty, so I'm like, sure, why not? So I put down his number, he doesn't know I'm deaf, though, right? We're talking through the, the cars. So, of course, I drive off, I get home, and I call him through video relay service. So let's say my interpreter's voice sounds like... <laughs> so this is what my voice sounds like through the interpreter. Don't make me destroy you. So picture that as my voice, and I'm calling this guy. Remember, he's really cute. So I make the call. And I tell the interpreter to dial a number. The cute guy says, hello. Hi, remember me? I was stopped at the red light next to you, and you held up your sign and like told me to call you? I'm calling you. Now, he hears. Don't make me destroy you. Um, uh, uh, 
oh my gosh, who, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid, why did I give this girl my number? Um, um, who, who is this? Oh, sorry, excuse me. Um, I'm deaf and I'm talking to you through a sign language interpreter. That's the voice you're hearing. Oh, you're deaf. No, 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 no. Deaf with an F. Deaf, not death with a TH. Deaf with an F. Deaf, deaf. I can't hear you, so I'm deaf. I, that's why the interpreter is making the call for me, because I'm deaf. Oh, you're deaf. Oh, you're, you're deaf? Oh, okay, okay, I remember you, I remember you, it's fine. I'm deaf, is that okay? Yes, it's okay. You're beautiful. Aww. <laughs> Thank you. So we hang up the call. And let's say we decide to meet up, and we date, and we start dating officially, and I call him again. And I get the same VRS interpreter. So I make the call again. Hi, sweetie. I'm just calling to tell you how much I love you. <laughs> and it sounds like... Um, oh, oh, I love you too. So the next time a guy pulls up to me and gestures, call me, I think, oh, let's text. <laughs> I'm sure you all agree. <laughs> Two different languages, American Sign Language and English. Very different languages. How the languages are structured are very different, even though you can accomplish the same meaning. The grammar, the structure, the syntax, everything about the languages is different. And you, as allies now, when you meet a deaf person, you might not be sure how to communicate, what to do. And there are lots of options available. If there's an interpreter there, by all means, ask the interpreter, hey, do you mind interpreting something for me for a minute? And then approach the deaf person. Have a conversation with the help of the interpreter. If there's no interpreter, it means you have to be a little more assertive. Walk up to a deaf person. Develop the rapport on your own. You can write notes back and forth. You can gesture. If a deaf person is comfortable with lip reading and speech reading, he or she will show you that by their body language and their use of their own voice and eye contact with you. The important thing for you as allies now to remember is to respect the culture and respect the language. Don't ask, can you lip read me? Can you talk? That's not okay. That goes back to that old perception of, well, speech is clearly better than sign language. Let the deaf person show you his or her preference, and then you work to accommodate that. If the deaf person has an interpreter standing there, by all means, work with the interpreter. If the deaf person pulls out a pen and a paper, do likewise, and write notes back and forth. If the deaf person approaches and uses his or her own voice and attempts to lip read, fine, do it that way. The important thing is to meet the deaf person where they are, and show by your ally behavior that you have a good attitude that you are ready and willing to work to accommodate the communication needs. Show that you have that fabulous respect. As an ally, you don't have to know American Sign Language. 
you have to show that you are willing to work with and accommodate the needs of the communication to both people's satisfaction. If you don't know what to do, ask the deaf person, is this working? Is this not working? Are you comfortable? How do you want to handle this communication? Deaf people are more than happy to work with you. And it's OK to make mistakes. If something doesn't work, try it again. You're learning their culture and their language, and they're learning your culture and your language. And you need to find a common ground. I want to introduce my hero. His name is George W. Veditz. In 1913, so 101 years ago, George Veditz was alive and well and brilliant. And he saw a new technology, being the film camera, being brought into the world. At the same time, he saw experts in American Sign Language who were getting older and would soon not be on Earth anymore. And he worked with the technology to be able to preserve their American Sign Language and their stories and their experiences to preserve our history. And he used this new technology, the film camera, to record people telling stories and record history. In 1880, prior to 1913, there was an international congress that worked on issues related to education of the deaf that banned the use of sign language in all schools. That was in 1880. So 1913, 33 years later, George Veditz was working hard to get the word out. Don't be discouraged. They told us we couldn't use sign language in our schools, but we need to fight back. We need to preserve American Sign Language. And we have to work hard to protect our beautiful language and our beautiful history. He said, our beautiful sign language is the noblest gift God has given to deaf people. I love his use of the word noblest. Noble relates to nobility, kings and queens. It's a word of honor. And George Veditz chose that word and this message to give to the deaf audience that God made us. God loves us. God thinks we are beautiful and our language is beautiful. It is a gift that he has given us. He sees deaf people as kings, as royalty. What an inspirational message especially coming after the decision of 1880 to ban sign language in the schools, gave deaf people hope. It gave them a renewed sense of pride in their culture. It gave them pride in their language. It gave them pride in their history. It changed the world. I ask you as allies now, you, see, you need to see deaf people as God sees deaf people, as nobility, as peers, as equals. Look at the beautiful deaf culture. Look at the beautiful people that God made. God loves deaf people. God loves hearing people. You need to love deaf people. See deaf people as humans. We're all made by the same God, and there's no difference between you and me. People do not hate by instinct. People learn how to hate from other people. They are not born with the ability to hate. Unfortunately, in the world today, there are many, many isms, many systems of oppression. Here are some examples that you've all heard of. Racism, discriminating against someone because of the color of their skin. 
ageism, discrimination based on age, be it old or young. Sexism, discrimination against a person because of their gender. Ableism, discriminating against someone because of what I think they can't do. And most people don't know this word in the center here, autism. Autism is discrimination against someone because they are deaf. Thinking I'm better than that person because I can hear and they can't. It's autism with a D, not autism with a T. Make sure you take note of that. The word autism was coined in 1975 by Dr. Tom Humphreys. He saw all of the challenges, the everyday discrimination that deaf people face, the history of oppression, and came up with this term to define it. And again, we go back to hate is not something that people are born with. Have you seen this? I love this quote. It's true. Do unto others what you would have them do unto you. It's the simple golden rule. You want me to respect you? Respect me back. Do you want me to be nice to you? Be nice to me. Do you want me to work to accommodate your communication needs? Do the same for me. And it's important to teach our children, to teach our friends, to teach our coworkers that same philosophy, that same approach, to see each other as equals. All people, all children have the same need. We need to find a place where we belong. All children, all people, need to experience love. It doesn't matter if they're deaf or hearing. We're all the same. There are different religions, different skin colors, different ages, different genders, differences of all kinds in the world that we see every day. And there are deaf people. You and I are no different. I love going to the movies. I love watching movies. How I watch a movie is through captioned glasses. So I have these glasses that I put on and I can read what the people are saying. There's this little, basically the words come up on these glasses, it's very cool. I can watch the whole movie with these glasses on and understand everything that people are saying, if there's a dog barking or the phone ringing. It's all done through captioning, so I read what the movie is being said. It's a wonderful experience. You guys like to go to the movies. I like to go to the movies. We are the same. How we watch those movies might be different, but we are the same. I love being a mom. My daughter, who again is here, <laughs> she, she loves <laughs> who, being a daughter, so. <laughs> when she was a baby, when she would cry, I would know this because lights would flash, and that would indicate that she was crying. And I would attend to her, just like any other mother would. Those of you who love being parents, that's the same as me. I love it, it's no different. How we know our child is crying might be different, but we ourselves are not different. I love to worship God. I love going to church. My pastor is deaf. He preaches in ASL. The songs, worship is done in American Sign Language. Those of you who love God and go to church and love to worship are the same as me. How you do it and how I do it might be different, but we are no different. We are the same. I'm a teacher here at Fresno State, obviously. I've been here for about seven years. 
And students sometimes will come up to me after class and say, oh, I saw a deaf person at a restaurant, or I saw some, a deaf person on a TV show, and they'll tell me things about deaf people or deaf-related issues, which is great. I love that. I love learning from students. But recently, I had a student come up to me and say, hey, I just went to this new restaurant, and the food was delicious, and left. And I was waiting for, you know, and I saw a deaf person, or there was a deaf person working there, and they just said that they went to this restaurant and left. And I loved it, because that meant they saw me as a person, as a peer. You don't have to just talk about deaf things with me. <laughs> if you go to a great restaurant, Tell me, recommend a restaurant, because I'll want to go. I get hungry. <laughs> that was the first time that had happened in seven years. I mean, and the person was so thrilled to tell me, and I was so excited, because I'm assuming what they would tell other teachers, they told me. They saw me no differently, and I loved it and thanked that person. We are no different. I ask you, as allies, to look at where you work, look at where you learn, look at where you go and play. See how you can open doors and include your deaf friends, your deaf peers, your deaf coworkers, other deaf people in the community. We are no different, and we want to be included in everything that you do. Focus on what we can do. Throughout history, deaf people have been excellent problem solvers. The Deaf President Now movement is a great example of how deaf people solved a problem. And still to this day, we hold that skill. If you don't know how to include a deaf person, ask us. Nothing about us without us. Include us. Ask us. We want to make a world, the world a better place. And this will be done through us, being allies. Again, focus on what we can do. And here are some examples. Oh my god. This is the first player in history. I don't care which team you are rooting for. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's deaf. <laughs> and the Seahawks won the Super Bowl. He was the first player in the NFL and the first one to win, uh, be on a team to win the Super Bowl. The first deaf pilot. Wow. A lifeguard, a deaf lifeguard that saved over 907 lives. She's pretty muscular. I'm not, but <laughs> do you guys remember the TV show Gladiator, American Gladiator? She was deaf. Professional dancer. I don't really dance, but she won awards. She won the Governor's Award. Motocross champion. UFC fighter. Oh, a chef. An excellent chef <laughs> who does all sorts of things when he cooks. Focus on what we can do, which is anything.
Until the day that a deaf person goes into a store and is not asked to leave because she is deaf. Until the day a deaf person is in a coffee shop and the employee doesn't hand the coffee to another woman and says, do you mind giving that to that deaf lady because I don't want to touch her? Until the day that a mother and a son see a deaf person on the street and, say, and the mother doesn't say to her son, don't, don't go near her, deaf people are God's mistake. Until the day that those things don't happen anymore, my work, your work, our work is not finished. There's still an opportunity for us to change the world. We have two choices. We can sit back and wait for the world to change, or we can roll up our sleeves and get out there and change the world. It's our choice. When you meet a deaf person, you don't think, oh, they're deaf, I need to go another direction. Meet them, gesture, write, fingerspell, learn a sign or two, ask them questions, get to know them. Get to know them as a person, find a way to make that connection. Become an ally, change the world. You are our future. We don't want to go backwards. We don't want those incidences to happen again.
Look at us the way God looks at us, as humans, as beautiful creations. Look at us and treat us with respect. Have a good attitude. You can build bridges with your open mind, with your heart, with your attitude. I'm grateful to the students who came up with the concept of Fresno State Talks. Because of those students, I'm here today. I'm grateful to the students at Gallaudet University who fought so hard and said, now is the time for change. Because of them, I'm here today. I'm thankful to Hannah because of your heart, because of the inspiration you felt the, because of the message you wanted to share with other people, to give other people the opportunity to experience a little bit of what you've experienced, I'm here. That's why I'm here in front of you today, to celebrate the beautiful culture and the beautiful language of deaf people. That's why you're all here tonight, to celebrate with me. I look forward to the day when someone says not, oh, I met a really cool deaf person, but just, I met a really cool person. The fact that they were deaf was incidental. I am a world changer. Are you? I think that you are and that you will all become world changers, that you'll become allies to the deaf community. Thank you.